So if you ever try to run multiple tasks in parallel that require, however, a dev server to be spin up, to be booted, you might have run into trouble with port clashes. So let's take the example, for instance, of a storybook test. We need to serve the storybook instance and then we run the storybook test against that instance. Now for one product that's pretty simple and straightforward, but like in a modern repo, for instance, where you have multiple ones, you need to make sure to adjust these ports such that they don't clash into each other. Otherwise, it won't be able to run in parallel. Now, this kind of scales in a small environment, but like in a large enterprise setting where you have hundreds of products, it's hard to actually scale. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can use the Annex extension API to dynamically generate such test targets and automatically increment the port basically for your user, for the developer. So here I have a PMPM workspace. It's actually a pretty simple one. So you can see I just have a bunch of packages. There's buttons, cards, forms, etc. What you would kind of expect in a design system uh, library. There's some dependence between those, but nothing fancy actually. Now each of them has Storybook obviously configured. Uh, so you can see here Storybook main and preview. And we have a bunch of actual stories here and Storybook tests. Now if I go into the package JSON, we see here uh, we, have, we can launch Storybook, we can build Storybook obviously, and we have this test Storybook setup. Now the test Storybook uh, uses here a package that is called start server and test, which makes sure the server is first launched locally. And then we run this test Storybook uh, instance here, which comes from the Storybook testing library. And we run it against the same URL, obviously, that the dev server has been created. And this works pretty nicely. So I can run pmpm nx test storybook, which is nothing else than invoking the script here uh, for our design system buttons, which is the project that we currently looked at. And you can see it will create here a new dev server. So it will launch that. And then it runs the tests against that dev server. And that is nice and easy. However, we don't have just have the buttons project in here. We also have cards, right? Which has the same exact setup. Just launching this one perfectly works. But once we try to run multiple ones, and so let me just run nx run many dash t dash storybook. So we want to run them in parallel. You will see that they quickly clash into each other because there is the ports already allocated. And so you cannot really reuse that again. So we could go ahead again and just fix these ports on all of our projects, which for our four projects here is actually pretty straightforward. But again, in a large enterprise setting, that's just not doable or scalable. So NX comes with an extension API, which you can find on the docs here on extending NX, which allows you to pull in an NX dev kit and then leverage some of the functionalities internally to give NX to NX dynamic targets that you control and you create uh, basically whenever we change something in the project. And so here in the recipes, you find a section that is about extending the project graph that NX builds up. So the project graph is the one we just saw uh, previously, which I'm showing here, but it ju doesn't just contain the actual projects, but also the tasks that you can run on these projects. And that's exactly what we want to do. So we want to basically generate this one here dynamically and not have this statically defined in all our package JSON files. So what I did here uh, is I already created that file here in the tools folder. You can call it wherever you want. You can create this wherever you want. And what this does is it leverages this NX dev kit, in particular, the create nodes v2 API. So down here we have a process files. Let's for now ignore that and just look at the actual API that NX invokes at, uh, whenever it figures or updates its product graph. So this create nodes v2 API gives you some glob patterns, which is the files it actually watches and it actually pulls you in where you are going to modify them or augment them with some way. And so in our case, we obviously are interested in all storybook projects and our storybook configurations, which is here in the dot storybook configuration folder, usually in some main TS, main JS file. Now this gives you gives us some callback. And I'm not going too much into the details. You can look these up. I just want to show you basically what you get here. So you get these config files and we can iterate over them and then process them. And this is exactly here, this function that we created up here, where we are doing some sanity checks up here. And then, however, we are going to dynamically return here a new product configuration. Now, this creates a product JSON format of running targets. And X basically has a way to not just run package JSON scripts, but you can also define a product JSON file, which is almost like a more evolved way of a package JSON script definition, which gives us some more options. And for those, we define these targets. 
So what we create here is a storybook serve target, which we have here. So we could even remove the storybook dev target that we have right now in our package JSON. But this is the more interesting one, which is the test storybook one, where you can see we define this command here. However, the port is something we pass in and we, which we handle to, where well, we handle basically the incrementing of the whole uh, port story such that we don't have any clashes here. And so you can see we dynamically generate this one here. We also set the current working directory such that that actually runs within that storybook package where, which we are currently running. And then we are returning this basically to the Annex API. Now, in order for this to work, we need to go into our Annex JSON. And here, if you don't have already, you should have a plugin section where we pull in this specific plugin. You can name this whatever you want. You can place this again, wherever, wherever you want. Just make sure you have some, some tsconfig base file uh, listed because Annex is going to load this dynamically in whenever it's going to rebuild the product graph. And so it needs to have some product root defined, otherwise you might run into some TypeScript errors. Now with that said, if we're going to do a PMPM NX reset, and I'll go here into the workspace data and into the daemon log, because behind the scenes we are running a daemon that is basically updating the product graph whenever some interesting events happen. And here you can see it also loaded our tools storybook ts file and you can see also the timing here so this is also a way for you to optimize that to make sure it's as fast as possible this is also where you can debug it in case it doesn't work you would see a stack trace in here so from this point of view it looks like it worked and now we're going to verify that by actually going into our packages and we're going to remove all the different story test storybook instances here so here also in the card package so we don't actually need them because we're going to generate these dynamically. And finally, also for the icons package in here. Now let's make a test and see whether we can still run it. So let me run this for our design system as we did before. And you can see it still works. So it dynamic target actually works because we can invoke it for our different uh, single project. Now, if you have NX console installed, which is an extension here, that you can install for cursor and IntelliJ and VS Code, obviously. You can also see these dynamic targets. You can go just here into, let's say, our button, go to the package JSON, and then you should have such an icon here, which opens up, which shows you all the NPM scripts that you have, but it also shows you these dynamic targets that got generated. And in this case, it's our test storybook one, and you can see the actual command that we run. Here we see it is port 3000. Now, if I go, for instance, to cards, and I'm doing the same here, you can see in this case here, it won't be 3000, but it won't be, will be 3001. And so basically this allows us now to have these ports dynamically generated. So let's do the final test run where this actually works. Let me use the run many again on all our storebook instances. And if you're lucky, we shouldn't have any port clashes at all now. And it worked. Awesome. So hopefully this gave you a good insight into the inference API. Actually, the Project Crystal plugins that you might hear of from an X use exactly this mechanism. You can hook them on config files, such as the Vite config file, and automatically generate targets, configure caching, and much more. This is a really powerful way. In general, like the whole extension API for an X is really powerful. That doesn't just allow you to here create targets that you can run, but it also allows you here, for instance, to enforce best practices by creating code scaffolding mechanism, code generating tools for your organization, such that, for instance, your packages are generated in a specific way and much more, which is always a better way compared to actually writing docs, but rather automating these standards. Hope this was helpful. Definitely check it out. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and see you in the next one.